15, Abby Oconee. Thank you so much, Brittany. And for folks that are familiar with this term, we are dealing with some upslope right now. And that's kind of helping push some of these clouds up against the mountains. So we are still dealing with overcast skies and a bit of fog here and there, along with some haze, some of that smoke from Canadian wildfires. And we should see a bit of mixing this afternoon, but again, still sticking with those cloudy conditions. Here's a live look from our American Furniture Warehouse Neighborhood Weather Network camera. Temperatures are cool. Grab the rain jacket and the umbrella for later as you step outside, and those wind speeds range under 10 miles an hour. Despite the overcast conditions and all, folks seeming to get along just fine this afternoon. As for what we're tracking throughout the rest of the day, the potential for some heavy rains, that's something we're going to be monitoring very carefully. Already, some showers and storms are developing in the high country. Now, we can't rule out some gusty winds and hail associated with some of these thunderstorms. However, those possibilities are lower compared to the chance for heavy rain. Live HU Doppler radar already showing some that activity for some of the mountain locations. Let's zoom in just a bit more to give you an idea of the overall track of a few of these storms. This particular line of showers is moving off to the north and to the east at around 13 miles an hour, and it's expected to impact Walsenburg, other portions of this southern um, I-25 corridor area in the next hour or so. So, folks, Walsenburg through Trinidad, just make sure to grab the rain jacket and the umbrella as you step outside. Here's a look at how those showers and storms play out throughout the rest of the afternoon. Afternoon. We pause the clock at 2 p.m. You still see a good amount of clouds to go around along the I-25 corridor for the eastern plains. Meanwhile, these showers building in the mountain locations will continue to increase in both uh, coverage and intensity with these showers and storms throughout the afternoon. 4 p.m., you can see still some of these showers impacting portions of the mountains and foothills, tracking off to the east throughout the day. Here's a look at 5:30. Still, I-25 primarily primarily looking dry. But for the folks who are traveling along the Palmer Divide, be aware of some of those showers. Now, I'm saying between around 6 to 8 o'clock, we'll see some of these showers and storms along the interstate continuing into portions of the evening and primarily diminishing by midnight. Make sure to tune in with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Plath at 4, 5, 6, and 10 p.m. She's going to be tracking to see just how long some of these showers and storms will stick around into the evening and possibly the overnight hours. Now, Storm Tracker indicates we don't have any severe weather threats across southern Colorado today. Even still, some of these storms could become strong, so best to remain weather aware. Aware of your surroundings and checking in with us frequently. Seven day forecast shows we are keeping in the chance for afternoon showers and thunderstorms each and every day, but we will stay especially active over the next couple of days. We'll warm to the lower 80s by Friday. Things look a bit more spotty for the end of the work week. In fact, those showers look to be spotty Saturday into Sunday. Monday and Tuesday, we increase the coverage of these storms just a bit. Over to Pueblo now, it is a similar story, but in Pueblo, take a look. We will start to warm temperatures to 90 degrees by Friday, and we stay pretty dry throughout the weekend. For folks that are dying to get outside, maybe go camping, hiking, enjoying everything else Southern Colorado has to offer, the weekend shouldn't be too bad. Monday and Tuesday, though, we add in the chance for those showers and thunderstorms once more. And Canyon City will reach 80 degrees tomorrow, lower 80s for your Thursday. We also clear things out Friday through Sunday, and we have the chance for afternoon showers and thunderstorms Monday and Tuesday. Finally, in Taylor County, we'll reach the upper 60s tomorrow, and after that, we'll just range in the 70s with overnight temperatures, 50s and the 60s. So for both Taylor County and Colorado Springs, we do have the chance for showers and thunderstorms each and every day for the next several days. Keep in mind a couple of things, though. The morning time frames will be fine on a few of those days. Also, check in with uh, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Plath because she is going to be looking at updated info by later tonight. All right. Um, I think I told you my niece and uh, her husband yeah, and four kids are right. just coming to visit in Colorado so Springs. Good. I think they're at Garden of the Gods right I now. I hope they have an umbrella just in case yeah. they got, get caught underneath the shower. Well, but. it's beautiful either way. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, totally. They're huh? ready. Thanks, Abby. Mm -hmm.